It's easy to buy into overkill. It's why we have trucks that can out-accelerate gravity. Yet excessive capabilities and features come at a price. Many here in the US do require a traditional pickup for work. But if your needs are limited and you're willing to admit that, the Honda Ridgeline offers a strong proposition. Disappointment is largely based on context and expectations. It's why we're happy when kids fall asleep on planes, but we're a little less enthusiastic when the pilot takes a snooze. If you're expecting the Honda Ridgeline to be a workhorse truck with crossover characteristics, you'll probably be disappointed. However, think of it like a Honda Pilot with some truck conveniences and clever features, and now we're cooking. Plus, for 2024, Honda has dished out several changes. First, there's a new Trail Sport trim, which replaces the previous RTLE. This adds all-terrain tires and off-road tuned suspension, which should soften things up a little bit over a rocky road. It also tweaks the sway bars to help increase articulation. They added a small oil pan skid plate and orange accents on the inside to let everyone know that you are passionate about dirt roads. Also important, Honda updated the infotainment system and the gauge cluster. They redesigned the center console. So now you have even more storage. You can now get ventilated front seats with the black edition. And Honda branded the tailgate. Though we did quietly lose one feature, and that is the truck bed audio that would allow you to play your music in the bed if you so desired, but at least the price has barely moved. Now let's discuss why the Ridgeline is so special and what doesn't work. The road manners of the Honda Ridgeline set it apart from most trucks. Now, of course, you can get a Hyundai Santa Cruz or Ford Maverick, which will also handle in a car-like manner. But I don't see those competing much with this due to their significantly smaller size and different price point. Going around corners, the Ridgeline is composed. So you have an independent suspension that is soft and even going through tight corners, the steering is slow, but it's precise. There might not be a whole lot of feedback coming from the wheel and it is light, but it builds up in weight ever so slightly as you go through corners, making it feel quite natural for a vehicle of this size. All of that makes it easy to drive on a back road and even somewhat enjoyable. Now there's definitely some body roll here. Even Honda's own Passport is more composed through corners, but this still remains sure-footed while also giving you a comfortable ride that's forgiving over most things. A large pothole will send a small shock to the cabin, but overall, I do think Honda has found a nice balance that allows for a smooth, confident ride. Plus, the good visibility makes this even more approachable on the road. And underneath is something that Chevy, Ford, and Toyota will no longer give you. And that is a naturally aspirated V6 with a nine-speed automatic, and it's this smooth and simple powertrain that I think a lot of people will find appealing, even if it's not the greatest setup for truck purposes. Honda has tuned this unit pretty well. It shifts seamlessly, there's no drama when taking off, and I can manually select gears if I want. The V6 has plenty of passing power, but you need to access the higher RPMs in order to get it. In fact, the big VTEC changeover happens at 5,500 RPM. But thanks to good gearing and a transmission that's ready to downshift, this feels linear and peppy. Getting the Ridgeline to 60 in a brief 6.8 seconds. Helping the torque reach the tarmac, or not tarmac, is Honda's great IVTM all-wheel drive with rear torque vectoring. Honda says it can send up to 70% of torque to the back and up to 100% of that twist to the wheel with more traction. However, there are limitations off-road due to its old pilot roots. Suspension articulation won't match a body-on-frame pickup. There's also just 7.6 inches of ground clearance and sizable overhangs that give it middling angles. Plus, there's no front camera to help out. Regardless, it's more capable than its appearance may suggest, and it should be phenomenal for snow and ice, too. There are also a couple of shortcomings to the powertrain and drivetrain. One, no low-range gearing is available, and two, while fuel economy and performance are respectable, this engine likes to rev, so getting up to speed or climbing hills with a trailer will be noisy. But hey, at least you get to listen to VTEC. Moving past the crossover driving dynamics, it's 
actually the clever versatility that I love the most about this mid-sized truck. Starting <laughs> with the... <laughs> Did you seriously call this a truck, brother? How could I ever haul my 54-piece Craftsman socket set and two pieces of soggy plywood in this glorified... Stop. 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 Starting with the dual-action tailgate, which drops down and, of course, swings out. Honda gives it this flexibility so that you have easier access to this giant trunk, which is good for storing both dry and wet goods, as there is a drain there at the bottom and it's covered in a durable composite material like the rest of the bed. So you don't need to spend money on a liner. Yes, this is just a little over five feet in length. It's also not super tall, though it's remarkably wide for this segment and comes with eight tie-down points, hammering home the versatility. Plus the 1,500 pounds of payload capacity bests many Toyota Tacomas. Moving inside, we have Honda's extremely helpful magic seat in the back. This flips up for easy storage of tall items or some bulky things that you might not want to just throw in the bed. There's great storage underneath the seat. There's also enough storage in here for it to replace an Amazon van. There's a cubby in most places imaginable. And there's a few other qualities to the cabin that make this its own reason to purchase a Ridgeline. The controls are intuitive, you have analog buttons and dials for most functions, and a few of them, like the ones on the steering wheel, have a tactile feel. There's also virtually no glossy black plastic. This should be easy to clean. For 2024, the Ridgeline has Honda's updated infotainment, which includes wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as standard. While that sometimes doesn't connect, at least the UI is simple, the resolution and response times are good, and I like the traditional Honda speedometer paired up with the digital dash that doesn't really do a whole lot. Plus, at six foot three, I am more than comfortable. The seats are soft, well-shaped, and supportive. The panel gaps are also pretty tight. The construction of everything feels sturdy, but I do have some quality concerns here, like a rattling from the subwoofer at just over a thousand miles, and a very slight noise while I'm steering around parking lots. It's not going to match the quality of something like a 4Runner, and there's a healthy use of some hard-touch plastic here too. But at least all of the areas that you would want padded are. The back seat, while the legroom isn't great, it's still usable for people that are over six feet, and I found the cushions to be comfortable, plus there are console vents as standard. While this has plenty of features, Honda makes you spring for the black edition in order to get a dad mirror here. It's not that I really care about having this in a five passenger vehicle, but it's one of the more weird cost cuts I've seen. Though that brings me to another reason why I appreciate the Honda Ridgeline, and that is the value. For the money, say 44 grand, you'll have plenty of features like leather upholstery, heated seats, a sunroof, wireless CarPlay, a wireless charger, and all of the aforementioned storage solutions. While you will admittedly get more off-road or towing capability, a traditional truck will cost you more these days when equipped similarly. I'm also going to recommend it for its reliability, but that doesn't mean this was perfect. So let's go over the history. First, when these were released, we did have some reports of fuel injector failure. Some also had issues with their hood latches, there were complaints with the brakes, and the fuel pumps. Yet the most reported problems were related to the backup camera and miscellaneous electrical woes. The latter of which still affects some ridgelines. Powertrain wise, there were issues with the previous 6-speed auto, but the 9-speed has been much better. The 3.5 liter has also been a great engine to most. However, some have run into a mysterious misfire that comes and goes after long highway travel. The definitive cause of this is unknown, though overall it's a good not flawless powertrain. It is direct injection only, so make sure to work in a fuel induction cleaning service every 30,000 miles or so. Um, it will also need a tune-up for the valves every 100,000 miles. Because of outstanding owner reviews on cars.com and Edmunds, I would feel confident recommending this to someone that prioritizes longevity, despite this being far from perfect. But it wouldn't be a review if I didn't also discuss the drawbacks. So the biggest limitation to me is the towing. Many Ridgeline owners vouch for its performance 
performance as a polling pickup, but its max capacity of 5,000 pounds and its engine that prefers to rev high makes it less than ideal. For people that want to tow another car, you should probably look elsewhere. I also wish they offered some other powertrain, maybe a hybrid or something that's a little bit more torquey than this. And even though this would be great for a vast majority of forest service roads and camping, if you wanted something that was really capable off-road, the Ridgeline's relatively low ground clearance, crossover articulation, and middling approach departure breakover angles will keep this in the dust of basically any body on frame pickup. The bass sound system also struggles with high frequencies. There's no dampened tailgate. Like basically all other midsize trucks, rear legroom is just okay. And we also only have one bed size. For most mid-size truck buyer needs, the Honda Ridgeline would likely suffice, but a lot of pickup buyers want something that goes above and beyond their needs. While this continues to gain sales momentum, I still understand why the Toyota Tacoma is much more popular. The Ridgeline's objective is to be superior on 99% of drives, and non-work use trucks are typically sought after for capabilities that might matter during the last percent. If you're willing to make that compromise, I think the Honda will leave you pleased, but I think the strongest appeal here is to those that are just pondering a pickup. Folks that are used to SUVs and don't really need three rows, but desire maximum levels of utility. To them, I think the thoughtfully funky Ridgeline is a must drive. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then leave a like to help me take on the maniacal YouTube algorithm. Become a channel member for an additional podcast and to help me take this to another level. I'll catch you in the next one.